Good evening to all of you and thank you for joining us today for Dr. Reddy's earnings conference call for the third quarter of fiscal 2018. Earlier during the day, we have released our results and the same are also posted on our website. We are conducting this live webcast of this call and a transcript shall be available on our website soon. The discussion and analysis in this call will be based on the IFRS consolidated financial statement. To discuss the business performance and outlook, we have the leadership team of Dr. Reddy's comprising Mr. Abhijit Mukherjee, our COO, Mr. Shaman Chakravarti, our CFO, Mr. Anil Lambujipad, who heads our proprietary products business, and the investor relations team. Please note that the, today's call is a copyrighted material of Dr. Reddy's and cannot be rebroadcasted or attributed in press or media outlets without the company's express written consent. Before we proceed on the call, I would like to remind everyone that the safe harbor language contained in today's press release also pertains to this conference call and the webcast. After the end of the call, in case if any additional clarifications are required, please feel free to get in touch with the investor relations team. Now I shall turn the call over to Mr. Shaman Chakravarti, our CFO. Thank you, Sanab. Greetings to everyone. I will cover the key financial highlights. For this section, all the amounts are translated into US dollar at the convenient translation rate of 63.83, which is the rate as of 29th December 2017. Consolidated revenues for the quarter at rupees 3,806 crores or 596 million dollars grew 3% year on year and 7% sequentially. During the quarter, our proprietary product business secured the NDA approval from US FDA of Impose, that is brand of low concentration clobetasol cream. This had been recently out licensed to Enco Dermatology Incorporated for the commercialization of the product in the United States. These approvals triggered the recognition of part milestone of $20 million in this quarter. Normalized for this, the balanced sequential growth was also aided by incremental contribution from new products partially offset by the price erosion in North America genetics business. Revenues from global genetics segment is at $472 million and PSAI segment is at $85 million. Consolidated gross profit margin for the quarter is at 56.3%, a sequential improvement of around 300 basis points. Gross margin of global genetics and PSAI were at around 59.5% and 23.8% respectively. Sequential improvement is largely attributable to the better product mix and also the above referred milestone recognition in our proprietary product segment. SGNS spend, including amortization, is rupees 1,205 crores or 189 million dollars, a sequential increase of 9%. During the quarter, we settled with the US Department of Justice on the litigation involving packaging related issues against a payout of $5 million. During this the balance increase in on account of certain sales and marketing and other spends towards events specific to the quarter. We continue to focus on optimizing costs as an organizational priority. R&D expense for the quarter is rupees 467 crores or 73 million dollars representing 12.3% to revenues. This is in line with our expectation of cumulative spend of around $300 million for this financial year. EBITDA for the quarter is 
rupees 806 crores which is 126 million dollars and is around 21.2 percent to revenues during the quarter we generated 136 million dollar of positive cash flow from operations consequently our net debt to equity ratio has improved to 0.25 as on 31st December 2017. As you all are aware that recently the USA has enacted the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. Consequent to this enactment, we have reviewed and remeasured the deferred tax assets and liabilities of our US entity, resulting in a one-time charge of rupees 93 crores recorded under tax expense. Normalizing this impact, the effective tax rate for the quarter is approximately 28%. However, on the adjusted basis, the annual effective tax rate would be in the range of 23 to 25% as guided earlier. Key balance sheet highlights are as follows. Our operating working capital decreased by rupees 33 crores or $5 million over this quarter. Capital expenditure for the quarter was rupees 221 crores or $35 million. Foreign currency cash flow hedges for the next 15 months in the form of derivatives for US dollars are approximately $290 million, largely hedged around the range of rupees 65 to rupees 67.8 to the dollar. In addition, we have balance sheet hedges of $212 million. We also have foreign currency cash flow hedges of 970 million ruble at the rate of rupees 1.12 to the ruble, maturing over next 15 months. With this, I conclude my section and request Avijit to take through the key business highlights. Thank you, Sermon. Uh, greetings to everybody and a warm welcome on the on this earnings conference call. Let me take you through the business highlights for each of our key markets. This has been a good quarter for us despite challenging market conditions. At an overall level, we have seen some growth on a sequential as well as YOI basis, <coughs> with most businesses doing well. We look forward to building on, uh, uh, on this uh, growth momentum in coming quarters. Please note that in this section, all references to numbers are in respective local currencies. Our North America, North America generic uh, business revenues for the quarter are at 246 million, Regist uh, registered a healthy growth of 12% on a sequential basis. This growth was predominantly driven by high sales for several launch owing to channel price sell. The quarter continued to witness higher levels of price erosion for base business in low to mid double uh, digits, driven by customer price harmonization and increased ANDA approval. We anticipate the market dynamics to remain challenging in near term, owing to annualized impact of pricing uh, actions and incremental competition in some of our high value assets. On the other hand, we have launched 11 products in US and two in Canada till date. In this quarter, we ramped up sales of Cevaloma tablets, launched clofarabine and melphalan injections in the U.S. market and as a recipe injection in Canada market. We continue to gain traction on new launches and have performed well in contracting market shares. On the pipeline front, coming fiscal is expected to remain exciting with fairly good number of new launches scheduled, including some high value assets. Let me provide an update to you on the status of three key launches. G-Suboxone, G-Numonovering, um, and G-Copaxone. On G-Suboxone, we have received minus here recently and expect to respond in a month's time. We are closely watching the IP position and our actions would be in accordance with the development in the own litigation front. On the second asset, 
Gene Overing. We have responded to some additional queries received from, from the agency, and our stat now is early Q2 FI19. With IP situation behind us, we feel optimistic about the launch of this product by mid of FI19. Finally, on G Copaxone, we have received queries on the DMS. While there is some work involved, we feel uh, we can respond in a few months and continue to progress on the asset. On Euro business, we recorded sales of 26 million with a year on year decline of 11%. As you may be aware, this quarter we faced marginal supply issues following the German regulatory audit at one of our formulation facilities in Bachapalli. The reinspection of the site by German authority was completed uh, in this month. The audit outcome was positive and the site was cleared by German authorities, paving the way for all dispatches to come in. We hope to get back on the job of rebuilding the business in the near future. On emerging market business performance, uh, sorry, our emerging market business performance has been consistently improving on the back of new product launches entry into new markets such as Brazil and Colombia and supported by stable currency. Russia business grew 5% YOY in constant currency and 9% in INR terms. Performance in other markets has also been in line with our expectations. We are looking forward to augment our emerging market footprint further with opening up a few significant emerging markets in coming fiscal year by leveraging our oncology and biosimilars portfolio. We remain optimistic of building this momentum further leading to a healthy and sustainable growth in these markets. India business revenues are at rupees 613 crores and grew 3% YOY. The channel inventories have now normalized. Our sustained prescription growth has been encouraging and we feel positive about the direction of the business. We look forward to revival in market growth rates back to historic levels of double digits in near term. The PCI business posted revenues of 84 million and has grown 5% on a YOY basis. The business has undergone strategic realignment in the last couple of years with focus shifted to cost rationalization, change in geography mix, and leverage of relationships with partners to move into dosage sales of select molecules. We believe that this will provide a sustainable growth for the business in the long term. In our proprietary product business, as disclosed earlier, we were able to secure the approval from FDA on the NDA application of DFD06. This was a critical milestone and in line with the agreement with NCO Dermatology and we recognized related milestone value this quarter. Overall, we continue to focus on building our existing commercial footprint and also enriching the development pipeline. On the commercial side, we're experiencing gradual increase in prescriber base for our lead products, Embrace, Sonego, and Phanex. Lastly, let me provide an update on quality front. We began 2017 with the resolve to improve manufacturing operations and strengthen our quality management systems across the organization. We believe that we have made considerable progress on this journey. On US FDA side, multiple sites were audited over the last one year. Agency has sent some queries on the API side in Stricoculum, which have been responded now. Regarding the sterile injectable facility in Duwada, the quality improvement program is in progress in line with the comments made to the, to the agency. We await the reinspection of the site possibly in a quarter or two. Quality and operation transformation will remain top priority for the organization going forward in addition to our focus on growth and cost optimization. With this, I conclude my section and open for Q&A. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to limit their questions to two per participant. Time permitting, you may come back in the queue for a follow-up. We will take the first question from the line of Manoj Garg from HealthCo. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the questions. Um, a few on the U.S. segment, um, and I'll just go ahead and um, ask, the, ask the questions and go back on mute. Uh, one, uh, what was the approximate contribution of uh, Civelomer uh, during the quarter, since, uh, since you did have it for the, for the full quarter? Uh, two, uh, on U.S. price, can you share uh, some additional color other than um, the one or two lines that are in the press release? Um, and then lastly, 
Um, I think you spoke briefly about Capaxone and, uh, and Suboxone. Can you just maybe um, extend a little bit more color there as well as um, in terms of the nature of the queries or what the agency um, you know, continues to look for there um, as well as provide uh, an update on Revlimid? Thank you. Okay, a lot of questions. Uh, let me uh, take the first one on several levels. Without getting into absolute specific details, we were ahead of the other competitors uh, by uh, you know a few weeks, which helped us in launching the product and uh, fill the channel. Uh, so uh, it is uh, uh, you know significant, and uh, we'll see some mid ocean uh, in the subsequent. Uh, quarters in terms of, uh, while on the other hand, uh, there is of course, um, you know, the innovator, uh, uh, you know, the percentage of shares continues to be high, which also provides some opportunity uh, in, uh, for the future, but more players have entered and prices have, uh, you know, fallen to the level uh, with more competitors coming in. Uh, the second question was, I guess, the color, a uh, little bit of color on pipeline and launches, I guess. That was the second question, was it? Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, probably, just on, I, on U.S. price. And price. And price. Pri okay. Uh, the, pi uh, the Broadly, the next year, next year, I think, uh, quality of launches, uh, uh, we, we feel uh, better than this year. Uh, however, this is all uh, subject to approvals um, coming on time and litigation playing out uh, uh, in the right way. Uh, but having said that, uh, clearly richer than this year. Uh, on, the, on the pricing, uh, let me take it in two parts. I will borrow the term uh, from another company, uh, base products and transitional products. Uh, base products erosion is uh, likely to slow down and flatten in uh, you know coming several quarters if not immediately but the transitional products intensity of uh, erosion will continue to be fairly heavy uh, you know in in net of net uh, i i think uh, we would continue to see annualized erosion in uh, you know Low double digits, but it's any. It's you know these are you know predictions uh, um, and uh, you know uh, difficult to be uh, very specific about these. Uh, your third one was um, Color of no on the on the specific assets. Uh, so I think uh, Sugarson. I think uh, we on the you know it's still. IP uh, uh, is being uh, discussed, litigated, as you know. Mm, uh, there is uh, uh, still a patent uh, which is uh, being asserted, and then a couple other which are not yet, uh, which are coming up. So we'll see. But uh, we feel very strong about the position. But on the litigation, let us see how that progresses. Otherwise, the asset uh, per se is progressing in the right direction um, in terms of our responses and uh, uh, sight and all those things. Uh, as far as nobody is concerned, the IP is clear, as you know, and uh, it all depends on the approval of the asset. And I, I just sort of mentioned that uh, it's progressing, and we have a tad um, in very early Q2 of FY19. Uh, Copaxone, uh, uh, the DMF, uh, you would recall we had uh, a date of November, but it got uh, two, two and a half months delayed. We just received a uh, week back or so um, uh, the DMF uh, queries. Uh, it's, uh, it involves some work in terms of analytical, but the good thing is I think we feel and our, our science team feels that uh, there is nothing we should not be able to answer. But having said that, uh, the, it will take uh, you know four to five months to put it together and respond, um, and we'll see uh, whether there are follow-up questions um, on that, etc. So beyond that, um, it's, it's uh, in, you know that's where it is at the moment. I guess I have more or less answered all your questions. Thank you.
We will take the next question from the line of Prakash Agarwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Good evening to all. Uh, first question on the actually the gross margins flowing down to EBITDA margins. Now, if we adjust the uh, one-time uh, milestone payment that we received, uh, despite the Q&Q jump in the U.S., uh, we haven't seen much of a movement. I mean, it's actually flattish. I'm just trying to understand what has really, uh, you know, led to this. Is it the, you know, the pricing pressure? Though we are getting top line, but uh, uh, we have not got the margins. Or how should we think about that? If the sequential improvement is around 300 basis points, uh, slightly more than half of it is due to the property product uh, <coughs> milestone related uh, revenue recognition. So remaining. Uh, is on account of uh, uh, the U.S. growth uh, as well as uh, whatever other uh, measures that we have been taking. Uh, but there have been, uh, you know, there will be always some quarter-specific events, so that's why it is very difficult to uh, predict accurately how the margin is going to move from one quarter to another quarter. But if I remember, you know, in the last quarter, uh, in our call, there were specific questions about margin. So we are targeting to keep in the same kind of a range. Okay, until and unless uh, your uh, major products start kicking in uh, next year. Yeah, of course, if there is a, uh, like a significant product launch which happens with much higher margin, that will help us improve. And couple of uh, you know peer group have talked about uh, you know some impact of uh, uh, you know the VBAD uh, pricing uh, from the consolidation. So has that also uh, you know uh, impacted in terms of pricing uh, apart from the base business pricing erosion? Yes, yeah, it had an impact. So the agreements had its impact. And and it's a full blown impact, or we are likely to see more impact going forward. Mostly it has factored in some need still uh, fail over. Okay, understood. And secondly, you talked about TAD for Nuvering, I think, which is slipped to uh, Tokyo now. Uh, would you have a TAD for Copexon and uh, Suboxone as well? Uh, for Copexon, uh, we, you know, we'll have to answer the DMF and post the DMF, uh, the uh, the other dates would come through. It's still uh, while away. Uh, on Suboxone, as I said, um, uh, the, our journey towards approval is progressing uh, well in terms of the technical terms. Uh, it uh, you will have to watch the IP development, and that would uh, be governing the destiny of the asset. And any time frame we are expecting? I mean, uh, earlier we had talked about uh, April time frame. On the litigation front, uh, it will be difficult for us to comment. Okay, understood. A and one more question I had was on, you uh, talked about the quality of approvals and launches would be better going forward. So you are uh, assuming or you are factoring in uh, Sheik Karkakulam as well as uh, the Duwada facility resolution, or uh, it's without that you're expecting both the number of approvals and the quality of filings to be better? So, um, I mentioned uh, about few assets, um, uh, you know, uh, no worrying, uh, more, a little more, uh, there's more certainty around Suboxone. Uh, certainly, we feel optimistic. Uh, so we'll see where it goes from there. So these are certainly collateral matters. As I said, that we should be able to respond. These are all in public domain, but there are quite a few which um, are not certainly not of this size, but uh, still meaningful uh, in course of the year, uh, which uh, can provide. I mean, I'm talking of. Uh, you know, four quarters of next financial year, uh, which can provide uh, uh, good support to the logic. I mean, taking all of it rather than getting into specific side deals. Why I'm say not uh, commenting on the side deals because you'll appreciate that uh, next year's launches. Um, you know, uh, it would uh, not be fair to factor in 
uh, too much site level uncertainty. So some test transferred, some maybe towards the end of the year and in the process of being test, being test transferred and so on and so forth. So given all that, of course, this is you know always a complete maze of um, you know what questions we will get from the agency and uh, what intellectual property issues will crop up. So those are uncertainties which remain. But you know, in best of our understanding, uh, I think. We still, I think we have there are assets. Perfect, thanks. And lastly, you missed your call. Prakash, I'm sorry to interrupt, but may we request you to come back in queue for follow up questions. Thank you. Participants okay. are requested to limit their questions to two per participant. Time permitting, you may come back in the queue for a follow up. The next question is from Neha Manpuria from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, sir, so on Suboxone, is it fair to assume that uh, because we have a mi minor CRL, our TAD will now be pushed out versus the uh, March-April uh, you know, TAD that we had? Uh, look, I think, uh, let me uh, once again uh, talk about this. Um, in, uh, you know, this being the first wave generic, I think mm -hmm. uh, the approval pathway on the technical side uh, in best of our assessment should not be a bottleneck. I am okay. you know, I'm I'm pointing out to, to the IP development which you are watching very, very closely. We'll be plugged to it and see what happens. And based on that, that will govern the you know path to approval. And would this have to do with the uh, new patent that has been filed by the innovator? So those uh, details, I mean, um, you know, we would not be getting into, I think uh, there are several external uh, opinion views. You can get the details there. Sure, sir. Um, and last but not the least, of course, uh, uh, there is not full certainty on uh, first filer uh, and so on and so forth. But uh, again, all this is in public domain, so I'm not uh, mm -hmm. repeating most of these. But uh, the only thing I can I can probably say is overall, I think uh, technically we are moving in the right direction. Okay, got it. And sir, uh, you know we had, uh, talked about cost savings uh, two quarters back. You know we haven't really seen that much of it uh, come through in our numbers. Our SGNA even adjusted for the litigation settlement increased. When you know uh, when should we start seeing the impact of the cost saving uh, reflect in our numbers? So if you uh, take away what I said specifically, uh, that there was a uh, settlement. Uh, for which uh, uh, settlement with the DOJ. So if you, you know, normalize that, and I uh, also made a statement, there will be always, you know, some quarter specific things one has to look at, but we internally uh, have been seeing uh, good effect on all the efforts which have been put for cost optimization. And uh, going forward in uh, subsequent quarters, uh, we can see even a better traction. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Anubhav Agarwal from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, Swami sir, one question on India and Russia. Despite the higher promotion spend this quarter, we haven't seen the strength of growth in either of these two markets. Especially Russia, the base was weak and India base was not great as well. Uh, what has happened in these two markets? Uh, the SGNA in branded markets uh, do not uh, immediately translate into sales uh, uh, impact. Okay, these are, these are you know building brands and things of that sort. So it's not um, uh, not exactly immediately sort of replicable. Having said that, um, the mega brands in Russia have some. Uh, these are very big brands and which uh, are. Sort of a, you know, we the big brands where we have uh, Nice, uh, Omaze, Catherine, very big, and they uh, they you know the growth has tapered to a certain extent. But there are new launches. But more importantly, uh, overall emerging markets, I think I, we would uh, feel uh, we are feeling good about the institutional business uh, ramping up in the new markets. Um, so both Colombia and Brazil doing well, and uh, will further ramp up in uh, Q4. And uh, uh, as we go into next year, I mean, giving a forward-looking little bit of uh, projection, I think next year we hope to open another four to five markets. And there is a strategy, and we want to uh, extend the strategy all around the world. 
And uh, that part we feel optimistic about. I mean, every quarter we wouldn't be able to explain uh, GNA to turnover, but you know, given the stability in commodities, especially oil, I think we feel good uh, in next several quarters in emerging markets. Sure, Abhijit, sir. That, that's helpful. One question more on the U.S. market, Abhijit, sir. That, uh, if you look at the U.S. sales at $246 million this quarter, there were two components, certainly, like there was some benefit of seasonal sales, and certainly Renvela uh, or Sevlamer was a high contributor. If you were just, just to normalize Renvela and take off seasonal, just to understand what's a true base to look at, would a 5 to 7% correction would be a, a reasonable number to look at? Um, again, uh, um, I will not uh, exactly guide you. I said that it was the first quarter uh, channel filling for Renvela. Some correction prices have come in. Um, on the seasonal sale of largely injectables, uh, this year was certainly not uh, as big as previous years. The fact that the, the big assets have eroded uh, on the face of competition to a certain extent, um, uh, less on market share, more on pricing. And hence, the impact of that uh, may be to a certain extent, but not as big of, as previous years. But uh, uh, these two factors are rightly picked up. But we do have uh, in U.S., uh, um, I mean, there is a possibility of uh, an injectable launch, uh, which we'll see, we, and most of it is in public domain and, uh, you know, and, uh, IP uh, development and all that. And uh, the the... Second thing is, uh, uh, second thing is, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, one-off type of opportunity for a couple of quarters, uh, also uh, next two quarters. But then um, there is also price erosion thing, which is still continuing, and there is some more play out uh, of erosion in the next one or two quarters. So we have to take that in totality. So overall, uh, yes. Uh, I mean, there may be some erosion vis-a-vis -vis this quarter. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Christian Tlenny from Stifel. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, and thanks very much for taking the question. Um, I just wanted to clarify again, if, if I may, on generic suboxone, just from a from an FDA and a regulatory perspective, you know, outside of any patent or litigation issue. Uh, just to clarify, it sounded like you received a, a minor CRL uh, recently. That's your, uh, if I understand, that's your second CRL on on, on the on the product. So, what what does that relate to? Um, because presumably it's all on done on a technical level. It's not really related to uh, to, to patents and outside of things. Um, and then what's your time frame from here? I mean, I think if I got it right, you talked about um, responding to the CRL in about one month. Um, and then what would be your projection in terms of FDA review uh, timelines of that uh, of that response? So on the type uh, of uh, question, the, all I can say is uh, we think uh, all these questions are easily answerable. And... Uh, hopefully satisfactorily. We would be able to respond to this uh, in uh, give or take three weeks from or three to four weeks from now. Um, and normally, when in the first wave of generics, I think uh, agency is really providing, uh, you know, the resources to such files. So, you know, depending on whether there will be more questions or not, at least the technical approval pathway, uh, you know, should be very far. You can make, do your own calculation. Yeah? So, so I mean, presumably there's sort of standard reviews, though, aren't there, for, you know, in terms of two or six months in terms of uh, the nature of the response? Yeah, I mean, in, in a first wave generics, uh, that's a fair assumption uh, from the response. Uh, you know, um, it, it 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 normally agency puts priority on such things. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Sebastian Sauter from RBC Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi there, guys. Uh, thank you for taking my questions. I'll. Uh, I, I know it's been it's been asked before, but I think my line went a bit funny. 
so I just wanted to clarify. Uh, can you, if you could update me, please, on the generic Suboxone film product? I understand you're in contact with the FDA. Uh, has it now been approved by the FDA? And if not, um, how have the interaction progressed? And do you believe you have answered all the concerns that were raised in this DRL? And then the second question relates to Indivia has recently accepted two, had accepted two new patents in the Orange Book. And we will be, I am keen to understand what impact this has on your launch timetable. Like, uh, for your for your own for your own uh, film product. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, firstly, on the litigation and the details, uh, we wouldn't be commenting. As I mentioned, we'll be watching this very closely. It's top of our priority, but we wouldn't be commenting on litigation and patents and quite a few things in the public domain uh, you'd have to look up. But on the technical side, I think we are doing fairly well, which I just explained in the last question on the technical side. I would not repeat the same thing. I think we are doing okay. Um, uh, the, uh, we got the minor CR. Uh, we'll be responding in, let's say, four weeks from now. And uh, yeah, you know, it doesn't, it's probably a quarter from there. I think the technical side, but uh, we'll have to yeah, watch yeah, yeah. that aspect on first filer uh, aspect, which we would never have visibility about, and um, IP wouldn't comment on. Okay, okay, okay. So basically, can I just summarize this? You said you got the minor CRL, and you're going to respond in four weeks from now, and you would assume a further response from the FDA probably a quarter from here. Uh, from then, and this is basically because you are the first filer, right? First wave. First wave. First, I, I said first wave. Uh, we we still it's it's not been uh, clarified that uh, who is the first filer. Okay, great. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Sian Mukherjee from Namura Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. Uh, is it possible to give a split uh, uh, between propriety products and others, the $39 million for the quarter? When you say uh, propriety products and others, mean? Uh, so you have $39 million. So how much is uh, propriety products in there? So basically, we are giving segmental uh, revenues and yeah, I, I just um, wanted to know the, you know, the property product, uh, you know, excluding the licensing. So, you, if you have a specific question, you can get back to investor relations later. Okay. And, uh, you know, so continuing with the prop products, can you, uh, you know, basically uh, give us the timeline for your filings of phase three assets, uh, which are currently under uh, development? Uh, can I ask yeah, Anil I, to respond to you? Yeah. Hi, uh, this is Anil Nabudripad. Uh, let me answer that question. Um, so we have uh, one of our key flagship assets that's expected to be a major revenue driver uh, for the Promius slash proprietary products business. It's called DFN02, which is um, a nasal sumatriptan for the treatment of migraine. We expect uh, to file an NDA in the next three to four months um, with that asset. We have another phase three asset that has completed phase three, and uh, uh, there are still some other um, preclinical studies and some CMC activities that are going on, uh, and we expect to file that NDA uh, sometime late in 2019, sorry, 2018. Okay, so you have two more phase three assets, right? When would you? We have a, thir we have a third phase three asset uh, which is currently in phase three, and uh, that's not complete yet. Okay. And um, what's the timeline for the asset which you uh, licensed from ESI, E777? When is that expected? So, when are the trials expected? Um, that one, the registration study is uh, ongoing, and uh, we expect to uh, have a BLA filed sometime in 2019 slash 2020 calendar year. Okay, okay, that's helpful, thanks. And just one last question if I can uh, on the biosimilar 
product, you know, uh, what is the current revenues that you're doing? Because you've guided for $150 million from emerging market by fiscal 20. Uh, I mean, what's the visibility on that number? So the target remains. So it's a question of whether it gets achieved in FI20 or get postponed by a year or so. You're moving well. We are moving well. Uh, next uh, year, uh, you know, for reasonably meaningful emerging markets, uh, we uh, should be uh, able to launch uh, our first map. Uh, other two maps, uh, uh, India approval, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, one uh, in a quarter and the one in few quarter, another one in a few quarters, and immediately thereafter, we will extend these also into those markets and uh, meanwhile the footprint is getting ready in all these markets uh, on the specifics i think uh, revenue wise it's progressing it's you know uh, every three months uh, you know are providing us new data point uh, beyond that i mean just uh, you know uh, stay tuned uh, we will keep you updated on how it's progressing thank you we will take the next question from the line of Manu Shisha from Research Delta Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, I, I had a question on three products. Uh, I just wanted to know the status of uh, Sandos 13 LAR, Luvenox, and Invega Sustena. No, sorry, can you repeat the name of the product? <clears throat> Sandos that LAR, Luvenox, and Invega Sustena. We don't comment specific. No, so you're talking of telephone is uh, occupied. Uh, uh, so it's uh, it's uh, it's some time away. I mean, we are uh, we, it's a complex product. We are trying to sort of uh, work on it. I mean, it's not uh, it'll take time. Uh, and uh, Lovenox is uh, already generalized and not um, high on the priority. And uh, what is the third one? Yeah, third one we would not specifically comment on um, it's not in public domain um, uh, and uh, we wouldn't specifically comment on it. So standard stat LAR uh, is it because of Duwada that it will take time or it is, is there so one, one thing I would like to say which we have said earlier that you know on our R&D pipeline and portfolio we would not like to comment on specific which is not there in public domain. So please don't insist on such questions. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Samir Baisiwala from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a quick question on Duwada. Uh, you were planning to do some site switches from there. Can you please update us on that? And do you expect any from the site switched um, products? Do you expect any major one getting approved in fiscal 19? It's an ongoing process. I mean, ongoing process. Uh, uh, not, not uh, an, you know, very easy exercise in pharmaceuticals. But we are taking one by one. Several in the past have happened. I mean, not you know, uh, from the water and uh, other sites as well. Uh, some of it has, you know, I'm talking of the last uh, 18 months or so. But as we speak, I think more being done. Uh, we will not go into specifics uh, on this, uh, but uh, we uh, we had mentioned that we had a uh, you know rich filing uh, list from the site, and uh, we are continuing to sort of uh, you know site transfer. Okay, and on Copaxone, your entire commentary originally was for 20 milligrams, uh, or also for 40 milligrams, because for 40, I thought the pad is in March. No, so Samir, everything is, will be hinging on the BMS. Okay, as you know, uh, the formulation is uh, less. Uh, the, so the, the the formulation. There may be a few follow-up questions. One, uh, you know, so that should not be, uh, you know, should be, shouldn't be much to handle. Um, uh, should be much of a problem to handle. Um, and uh, uh, so we are focusing very deeply on on the BMS. And uh, once we address it, I think. And of course, it's applicable to both assets, you know, and both assets have been filed. We probably last time said that we had the uh, date for 
uh, both will uh, will uh, will sort of if we are not so much uh, uh, preoccupied on the on the dosage thing. Okay, no, that's wonderful. That's that's good enough. And just one final uh, quick clarification on suboxone and novarin. Suboxone. Uh, I think when you say the IP is something that you're watching very closely, uh, and I know you're not going to talk too much, but just a, a little bit of a nuance for you. Is it your appeal case that you're more worried about, or is it your competitor's appeal case that you're more uh, worried about? And the second is on Nuvaring. Uh, I understand the patent is going to expire in April 18, and you probably are looking for launch in fiscal 2 Q19. So do you still think you'll be the first player, or do you think a competitor enters before you? Okay, let me answer the easier one first. Uh, no worrying, yes, April uh, 19, uh, April 18 uh, goes off, uh, the patent goes off. Uh, depend, depends on um, approval. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, TADS. Uh, uh, the, the responses have gone in uh, in early Q2. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, uh, slightly uh, clearer uh, the uh, pathway. As far as suboxone is concerned, again, I mean, anything on IP submit will be difficult to comment because you have to study this. Uh, the, uh, but we uh, we are, uh, you know, we're watching this very closely. We feel strong about the position we have taken, very strong about the position we have taken. But then it's uh, there are views uh, which have come up. So we'll see how which in which direction uh, it goes um, and. Uh, we have to leave it there uh, as far as suboxone is concerned. And of course, uh, we have mentioned that uh, the first filer exclusivity is not clarified as yet. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Chirag Talati from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for taking my questions. Two questions. So uh, a DMF query, essentially, it means that uh, it's a major uh, CRL. And if that is the case, uh, given that this is probably a third or fourth cycle of review, uh, there won't be a tag that will be applicable, right? Mm, I, so it is a major CRL. Uh, as I said, uh, there is uh, technical work, the volume of work is there, but uh, it's not something, uh, the, uh, you know, which we we cannot answer satisfactorily. So there are, uh, I think we, we will need some time. Beyond this, we'll see how that unfolds, actually. Uh, fair enough. Second question, uh, I mean, if I look at a U.S. sales, uh, you, you talked uh, about injectables, uh, injectable stock, uh, uh, stocking not being very high. But if we look at, you know, your uh, penicillin's portfolio and also some of your uh, uh, you know, antihistamines or LTRFOs, uh, there should also have been a seasonally strong quarter. So, you know, adjusting for these two, uh, I mean, can you, can you give us some sense of how the quarter would have panned out? Um, so, the, the, so on the injectables, there is uh, some, uh, as I said, that, uh, you know, Zenvela, uh, you know, ramp up and injectables are the two factors. Uh, the other factors uh, are not significant. I mean, when you're talking of uh, cefcofenadine and things of that sort, uh, I, they, I mean, I, I, would it make a substantial uh, difference? I wouldn't think so. Um, uh, yeah, and, uh, but so the three factors which I mentioned is uh, scale up of these two. Uh, there is, of course, a somewhat like price erosion to be, played, uh, to be playing out. Uh, to be counterbalanced uh, to a certain extent by uh, probably uh, hopefully an injectable launch and uh, uh, and uh, as some one of business but all in all I think uh, would we be able to maintain similar level of Q4 less likely okay thank you so much thank you we will take the next question from the line of Sham Srinivasan from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, uh, thank you for taking my question. My first one is on the U.S. Uh, tax changes. Uh, this deferred tax and uh, assets and liabilities, I think it's a, it's a one-time outstanding event. But can you talk about the flow in terms of the beat provisions, the base erosion and anti-abuse tax? Does it apply to our U.S. subsidiaries uh, for Dr. Reddy's? No. Okay, so we will. So there is no incremental impact that we foresee from this act uh, going forward in our business. No, this is just uh, the one-time impact that has been taken. 
and uh, <clears throat> depending on the inventory which is there there could be a very marginal but uh, that has to be great uh, how much it gets liquidated during the quarter it will depend on that got it thank you uh, just the second question on the commentary on the indian business which said the channel inventory has kind of normalized now so are we working with a lower number than uh, pre gst is it like 25 30 days now uh, or where is the new normal at this point of time it has gone past 30 days or it might not have gone back to 40 days okay okay and my last question if i can squeeze in on the tax rate uh, you know you said normalized tax rate is 28% for the quarter uh, what gives us the confidence and we can do the 23 to 25 because i think we have been trending about all those numbers in the first 9 months so we said our annual etr will be in the range of 23 to 25 we are still holding to that of course the annual etr now will go up because of the us uh, you know tax act so i'm saying if you adjust for that 93 crores then it will remain within that range thank you we will take the next question from the line of vishal manchanda from nirmal bank please go ahead yeah. thanks for taking the question uh, can you update us on alloxy litigation uh, there has been some recent uh, event happened there i mean uh, the whole lot is in public domain at the moment so you know it's everything is in public domain um, so just you can you know just click and read up actually um, and uh, we'll, we'll see we're keenly watching as we speak so uh, so i just want to understand does it affect uh, so can we expect a launch uh, in the near term depends on uh, the uh, the way uh, court uh, outcome happens okay uh, and second one uh, your out licensed asset uh, zena ward which you out licensed to galderma so could you guide us on when this would be commercialized anil yeah um so we are still awaiting uh, commercialization plans from galderma they they have some internal uh, um strategic priorities um and uh, but we do know that they intend to launch um so we are still awaiting okay and uh, finally on this uh, sardibo and zembre simtouch prescription seem to have uh, plateaued for a while so how do we look at it uh, going forward well uh, i wouldn't say they have plateaued for example zembrace uh, has actually been growing about 7ish 7%ish quarter on quarter and has gone grown about 25% over the same time last year um turnivo has been slightly slower but more recently there has been a pick up in uh, prescription volumes um and um, you know one thing i want to remark here is that zembrace has actually been uh, trending Uh, quite favorably uh, and one of the key reasons for that is because we have act- we managed to snag a major uh uh pbm listing uh, back a few months ago uh, with cvs caremark and that has had an impact on the volumes so nevo on the other hand we are still waiting uh, to get the cvs caremark coverage which i think will make a big difference in terms of the uplift in terms of prescriptions um and we are constantly continuously working on getting unrestricted uh, payer coverage across several other major plans um so um uh, you know we still are quite bullish about the uptake of these two assets over the next quarter and beyond so how long this uh, how long will you take to put the coverage in place as uh, you would uh, wish for um so uh, the, you know that is something which um, is hard to uh, specifically uh, put a date on uh, the reason being that many many of these major plans or most of these major plans have specific calendars where their pricing and therapeutic committee meet and make these decisions um so um i cannot at this time um put a timetable in place but uh, we are making every effort uh we have actually uh, beefed up our uh our managed care uh group here we brought in a few industry veterans 
uh, who have the right set of connections and the right experience with many of these plants. So they're out in the field speaking with all of the major plants. And uh, we are uh, quite optimistic about a positive outcome in the next several months. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Karthik Mehta from Deutsche Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. How should we look at the R&D expense uh, over the next two years, assuming that you have a fair lot of uh, filings and a lot of uh, proprietary-related products? Uh, for the uh, for the year, we are still averaging uh, lower than the last year average. Any thoughts on R&D, FY 18, 19, 20? Thanks. Okay. 